All right, so the summer is wrapping up and come winter, you might start planning your garden for next year and you might see all these horrible headlines about monarch populations declining and you might think, you know what, I'm gonna go plant some milkweeds. So you go to Home Depot and this is what you'll find there. You'll find Asclepius curasavica or the tropical milkweed. And I wanna encourage you to not buy this. <laughs> if you already own it, rip it up and compost it. Um, and I'm standing in front of a decent alternative. This is the balloon milkweed. This is a plant that I started fairly easily from seed and added to our birds and butterfly garden. And I just wanna encourage you to try other options because with the tropical milkweed, there's a number of different problems. There's essentially three different problems. One is that it is from a tropical climate, so it doesn't know a dormancy period. So it's not seasonally attuned the way our native milkweeds are gonna be. And because of that, um, and even in climates where this plant um, won't survive a winter, like if you're growing this in Ontario, for, some, or for example, um, yeah, it'll die in the winter, but you're not free of problems because it'll still remain active long past native milkweeds, um, which will go dormant during the winter. What does this do? Well, it creates like almost scheduling problems for the monarchs. They start to breed when they should be migrating and um, or that keeps them from migrating when they should be migrating. So if you are in, the, in Florida, for example, and you plant this here, you are part of a, a sort of corridor of monarchs that should be migrating to Mexico in the winter. But this will survive down there all year and it'll keep producing flowers and leaves and you will be de-incentivizing your monarchs to migrate. If you plant this plant, you are actively destroying monarch migration patterns. So I want to, my homework for you is to be honest with yourself. If you have a pollinator space and what you really want is just something pretty, my homework to you is to be honest about that and plant a lantana instead. I mean, this plant is not destroying anybody and looks very similar. It's just as showy, if not more showy. And I wanna encourage you to think about your native milkweeds, which are seasonally attuned. Um, this plant here uh, is not a native plant, however, in my own garden, what I do is I will plant our native milkweed right nearby it, so it's in the same sort of sun exposure. And when my native plant loses its leaves for the winter, I cut this down. And I leave nothing above ground for this plant uh, for, for monarchs to eat. The other problem with the Asclepius carasavica is that it hosts a nematode parasite called OE. And that parasite, um, typically it'll reproduce by, right, by spores, However, when it's on a milkweed plant that goes deciduous in the winter and then comes back fresh, you're free of that problem for that year, typically. This plant, because it never goes dormant, you never get that sort of clearing of that parasite. And so you can be sort of actively encouraging parasites to cause your monarchs to be born deformed or smaller than they need to be to migrate as far as they need to be. So that's the second problem. So you're destroying their monarch migration patterns. You're also destroying their kind of anatomy and their ability to be fully where they are. And the last problem with the tropical milkweed is that it contains toxins called carotenoids. And these are present in all milkweeds. So they're actually what the monarch butterfly, why, why are they that bright orange? It's because it advertises to potential predators, hey, I'm full of carotenoids because I eat milkweed. Um, so some amount of carotenoids is fine, but more evidence is emerging these days showing that with the tropical milkweeds, with climate change and warming climates, those carotenoids get to a point of toxicity that actually decreases the lifespan of adult monarch butterflies. So that's the third reason to not go with our tropical milkweed, because again, you're destroying migration patterns, you're producing more OE that can cause them to be deformed and you're decreasing their lifespan. So do go with alternative options. They don't have to be native, but I like to use my native milkweeds as a clock by which I, I uh, form my cutback patterns of my exotic milkweeds. And who needs this when you have this? This is just so much cooler. So think a little broader, check our native nurseries for Asclepius fascicularis, the native milkweed that is the narrow leaf milkweed. It's easily available from California native nurseries um, and it's just as beautiful.